Hi friends. Um, today I'm just going to talk to you about Our Lady Guadalupe. Just give you a short summary. The image of Our Lady Guadalupe is known worldwide and it is very much tied to Mexican culture. But I'm not sure how many of the people who recognize the image actually know its story. So in this video, I'm going to give you a short summary of what took place in Mexico on December 12, 1531, and how it united a nation under one faith. Mexico had been recently conquered and colonized by the Spanish in 1519, and in 10 short years, they were the dominant ruling force in the region. The Franciscans made it their mission to evangelize the New World. They did their best, but they were finding it a very difficult task. They did achieve the conversion of some. One Aztec in particular would play a central role in helping bring his native brothers to Christ. This man was Juan Diego. Just having taken his name in baptism, he was a humble and devout new Christian. Juan Diego, at the ripe age of 57, took up the habit of getting up before dawn every day to walk 15 miles and attend the nearest Mass. On one such day, he ascended to the hill of Tepeyac and saw a luminous lady dressed like an Aztec princess. She spoke to him in his native language and asked that he go to the bishop and request a chapel be built there on Tepeyac. Our Lady then said to him, Know for certain, dearest of my sons, that I am the perfect and perpetual Virgin Mary, Mother of the true God, through whom everything lives, the Lord of all things, who is Master of heaven and earth. I ardently desire a temple be built here for me, where I will show and offer my love, compassion, my help, and my protection to the people. I am your merciful mother and mother of all who live united in this land, and of all mankind, and of all those who love me, and all those who cry to me, and of those who have confidence in me. Here I will hear their weeping, their sorrows, and will remedy and alleviate their suffering, necessities, and misfortunes. Therefore, in order to realize my intentions, go to the house of the bishop and tell him that I have sent you and that it is my desire to have a temple built here. Tell him all that you have seen and heard. Going as he was told to Bishop Zumarga, he related the message, but the bishop, understandably skeptical, asked for proof from Our Lady. But on his way back to receive the proof of her visit, Juan Diego instead makes a detour to get his dying uncle a priest for his last rites. Our Lady disrupts his plans by appearing before him on his way. She lets him know his uncle will be healed and to continue her requested errand. She says to him, listen and let it penetrate your heart. Do not be disturbed, weighed down with grief. Do not fear any illness or vexation, anxiety or pain. Am I not here, who am your mother? Are you not under my shadow and protection? Am I not your fountain of life? Are you not in the folds of my mantle? In the crossing of my arms, is there anything else you need? She then asks him to gather flowers at the top of the Tepeyac Hill. She arranges them in his tilma, which is like a cloak, and sends him back to Zumarga. The bishop is, of course, impressed with the Castilian roses, especially because it is December and these flowers do not grow in Mexico. But the real miracle happens when he lets them fall to the ground and the image of Our Lady appears on his tilma. This would be the beginning of the largest conversion in human history. Nine million Aztecs would convert to Christianity within a few years. The image was like a pictograph to the Indians who could read and understand its meaning. She was shown to be greater than their sun god and all their other cosmic deities. She was dressed in royal colors. She was pregnant with Christ and yet bowed her head in humility and prayer to the one true God. How awesome is that? All that information in one image. The sight of this visit in her image is seen by 10 million pilgrims a year. I have dedicated all my current artwork to Our Lady of Guadalupe, who so shows us such beautiful humility and motherly love. Bringing us safely to Christ, she desires only to give him glory. And I hope you do more research on this image and its history. There's so much I left out and so many wonderful details. In fact, please feel free to expand on the subject by offering links 
book recommendations, and other resources in the comments below. God bless and goodbye for now.